to be the most down bad. Um, and in like hearing, <laughs> if I'm a Bucks fan and I hear Doc on Bill's pod today, right. I it got to drive me freaking insane. When you hear Dame Lillard say that he was just not in shape the entire season and Doc's just like spilling all these secrets, I would be so mad if I was a Bucks fan at this point, man. But you talked about, you know, would we choose Tatum over Luka? One of the conversations that I keep coming back to, Will and I have talked about this a little bit, and Will, I'll kick it to you. Jalen Brown and Team USA, man. Like, Team USA has to be thinking to themselves, how do we get Jalen Brown onto this squad? When you think about the versatility that he's shown and the, the poise that he's shown in these finals, you know, him, Drew Holiday, and Jason Tatum, just the continuity that they have, bringing them all to the Olympics, I think would be really special. Where are you at, Will, right now with the idea of maybe Jalen being an injury replacement for Joel Embiid or for Kawhi Leonard? I mean, I love the idea, and I think when you watch him match up with Luca, who we'll see what all these injuries do for Luca's availability. I'll tell you what, Will Devin Olympics. Booker is not shutting down Luca Doncic in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very fair point. That's a very, very fair point. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think as a Celtics fan, I'm like, all right, I don't know if we need a whole fourth of this Celt of the Celtics team immediately going to the Olympics. So selfishly, a little bit of reservations. And I mean, if you think about it, I'm pretty sure and I'm, I haven't looked this up, but I don't even think he made the final pool of people that they were choosing the, you know, the, the, the roster from. So I don't even know. I, I don't I mean, I'm sure it's Team USA. There's not really strict rules of Grant Hill decided he wanted to just say, yeah, Jalen Brown, we're taking you as a replacement for Kawhi or for Embiid. He probably could. And I think it makes a lot of sense. I probably don't see it happening at this point because he wasn't. He wasn't in that pool, but Brian, I know you even tweeted this out last night as well. Like this has to be something when you think about if you're going up against Luca or you're going up against, you know, even maybe Franz Wagner and, you know, in Shit. Germany and, and, you know, yeah, there's a bunch of guys that you're, that you're thinking about where it's like, you know what, this Jalen Brown, who, you know, has prided himself this year, as we talked about, wanted to really be all NBA defense. Didn't quite make it, got votes, was in the discussion for it. You know, it probably hurt him that he had two other teammates that were going to make it. And so there's only 10 spots. It's, you know, a little tough to get 30% of that from one team. But you've seen his play defensively. You talked about the big block in the Indiana series. Everything he's done here has to be leaving an impression that I think Team USA, if they could do it over again, would at the very least have him in the pool of players being selected. Yeah, and I can understand at the at that point why they didn't really have him as like one of the top guys. But after watching this, it's like I almost feel bad for Jalen because yeah, that whole thing where Stephen A. Smith ran, basically read a tweet from one source that he has this better than you attitude, which I thought that was completely unfair. It's like okay, so one guy in the NBA texted you, and you're reading yeah. this to a national audience. I and Jalen handled that perfectly well. But I think he's going to be the Eastern Conference Finals MVP and the Finals MVP, and he's not going to be on the Olympic team. And I understand that these guys are huge in terms of their marketability, but LeBron's been on a bunch of teams, and I know you're not going to take LeBron off, but Durant, right. Kawhi is the one to me, and Embiid shouldn't play. If you're a Sixers fan, I would be incredibly upset if Embiid plays. And I would say the same thing. I don't know how many Clippers fans there actually are, but Kawhi can't we're gonna, finish a We're going to find out how many people want to go to that wall, which is supposed to be all Clippers fans. I don't know what that's going to look like. Well, I got a million bathrooms, so, I mean, they'll, <laughs> they'll be good there. But so I just think that if there is – and they're probably – like, I don't think Kawhi should play. I mean, he just signed an extension. And, I know, like, I do understand the point about, hey, we have Drew, Tatum, and Jalen there. Like, that, like that's a lot of basketball for all those guys after <laughs> – Hopefully, knock on wood, finishing this off on Friday night and getting banner number 18. But I think it would be cool for those three guys, right, to have Drew, Tatum, and Jalen there together and them to sort of be the guys there where it's like, yeah, we just won the championship. And the rest of the team, the rest of the team's like, oh, yeah, Devin Booker, you lost in the first round along with Kevin Durant. LeBron, your team stinks now and you're 40. All that team's concerned about is trying to figure out who can develop your kid, which I think is a totally different conversation <laughs> and ridiculous. But like J J Jalen deserves to be on this team at this point. So if there is an injury replacement and it's not Jalen, I think that would be incredibly dumb by Grant Hill in this group. By the way, on Grant Hill, the guy's obviously has had a great basketball life. And I give him a lot of credit, like obviously came back from all those injuries. Can we get him off these broadcasts? Because he won't criticize anybody. And I think it's because he is the head of USA basketball. 
if you notice, like one of the only guys he's criticized is uh, Luca, which he deserved to be criticized at the time, but he doesn't criticize anybody because I think he's afraid like these guys could be on the team. Yeah, if you look at Team USA's roster right now, there's three guys. Well, Embiid obviously is injury prone, had an injury this year. Kawhi, same idea. And then Halliburton, you know, the, the fact that he's on the roster to me is is a little bit crazy. Like, I think there's a lot of younger point guards that should at least be in the discussion as well. Um, and then when you look at Kyrie Irving, I don't know if Team USA would ever put Kyrie Irving on it, but just in terms of like the continuity on that team, if you have Jalen Brown and Kyrie instead of Tyrese and Kawhi, like to me, that's a better team. And I think that all the guys on Team USA would welcome that with open arms. But yeah, man, I think Jalen, I think he deserves to be on Team USA, man. I've been saying this since they announced that roster that it's crazy he wasn't even involved in it. And I truly think you know, when you think about the two-way impact and how you need to be able to be super physical in the in the FIBA game, Jalen is is tailor made for that and his ability to handle physicality. I talked about how when they initially left him off, Will and I were kind of going back and forth about this. That Jalen, when he first played on Team USA back in what I forget what year it was, um, he was playing the four a lot. He was guarding bigger guys, and they really gave him the opportunity to show that he could guard up. And that was the first time I really realized how strong Jalen Brown is. And he's continued to just pack on the muscle that we talked about earlier in the pod. But yeah, man, it's it's pretty crazy that Jalen's not on it and that everyone is kind of just accepted Devin Booker is better than Jalen Brown. Like, yeah, he's a better scorer, but is he a better two-way player? Same thing we're talking about with Tatum and Luka. And when you think about the 92 Dream Team and the passing of the torch that happened on that team with Magic and Larry to Michael, like something like that could happen on this Team USA team this year if they sent Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown with Drew Holiday as, you know, who knows who earns the minutes. That's going to be fascinating with Team USA to see who's in the crunch time five. Well, Tatum should start over Durant, but I don't think it'll happen because he's Kevin Durant, right? Like Tatum will probably, like he's been in the past, be like that six man coming off the bench. But Tatum is the best rebounder on the team that's not a center. I mean, that's one of the most underrated things about Tatum's career, right? He's it's already been three times he's averaged over 10 rebounds per game in the postseason. He's an unbelievable defender, too. Like, so and even Tatum, like he took on the Shea matchup earlier this season against OKC. But now that I think about it, what if Drew gave his spot to Jalen? He said, hey, I'm not going to play on the team, but the only guy that can take it is Jalen. Because from a Celtics fan's perspective, as somebody that wants to see this team continue to win, Drew Holiday, what did he turn yesterday? 34? Wasn't his 34-year-old 34, yeah. birthday? Yeah, he's, yeah he, he, he's our age now. He should be on the podcast with us. <laughs> <laughs> he just signed for a buck 34. I think the Celtics would be perfectly happy if Drew didn't go and he gave his spot to Jalen. So Jalen could play in could have Drew take the summer off because Drew's played a lot of basketball over the past couple of years. Yeah, I love that idea. I think that'd be great if uh, as if Drew Holiday made that, you know, but like you said, it absolutely can only be Jalen Brown. Otherwise, I'm still going to Paris. I think that'd be pretty fascinating if they were to put him uh, into put Team USA into that spot. 